I'd rather drop keel over at 90 having lived a great life and just getting off my bike than, you know, drooling in a wheelchair at 105. Now, who's going to break the record for longevity? Is it going to be a yogi who eats uh, leaves in the morning and meditates for eight hours? Or is it going to be someone who's uh, good at CrossFit, uh, hikes a lot on the weekend, has a lot of muscle mass, and has a busy, wonderfully engaged life where they're running two businesses and, and coaching uh, Hughes soccer? You know, when we talk about longevity, it's just, again, there are so many variables here. Probably the most common theme among all uh, centenarians is uh, what we call the ability to roll with the punches, how they, how they manage stress. So this could be a person who drank a fifth of whiskey, you know, every, every day and sm smoked a cigar, um, walked around a lot, certainly was active, that's, that's a critical element, but, but more importantly, uh, dealt with stress. It, it appears that stress is probably the greatest predictor, or how you handle stress, is the greatest predictor of longevity uh, of, of anything. And, you know, that, if you look into, um, you know, sirtuins, if you look into telomeres, if you look into that whole aspect of senescence, stress plays a huge role in, in that. Um, clearly with uh, in, in animal studies and now looking at human studies so you know it'll maybe it'll be the least stress maybe it'll be your yogi you know who's, uh, who's just uh, chilling out but it won't be an issue because in the next 10 or 15 years we will have some genetic modification I'm not in favor of it but some gene manipulation that will extend life I think fairly significantly um, for better or for worse mm. Uh, when you, you, you said an important uh, line there about an optimal amount of stress, and we kind of think in terms of stress being negative, uh, but I think the guy sitting on the beach with nothing to do um, is actually a huge risk factor sure. for yeah. uh, mental health and, and whatever else yeah. uh, versus that optimal amount of stress and stimulation and extending your career like this guy uh, continuing on because what else are you going to do yeah. except for stay engaged and, and try to make a contribution and all these great things that uh, make us feel good spiritually, mentally, all that. Yeah, yeah I mean, there, you know, there's no... There's no um, magic um, equation here. It, it comes down to you know, individual desires and wants and the uh, definition of what a quality lifestyle is. You know, I'd, rather, I'd rather drop keel over at 90 having lived a great life and just getting off my bike than you know, drooling in a wheelchair at 105. So I mean, that, you know, a lot of these things play a role in what, we, um, in what we look at in terms of optimizing our lives. In terms of optimizing stress, you know, we talk about hormesis, the hormetic stressors that are um, that that our genetic recipe is not just equipped to deal with, but expects of us. So many of us now, you know, undertake uh, activities like cold plunge, right? Like like cryogenic training. Um, I'll do a cold plunge a couple times a week. It's a hormetic stress. It's uncomfortable, and yet I know that my body is benefiting from that exposure. Now, if I was if I fell overboard in the, in the Antarctic, uh, you know, off a boat and I was in the water for 35 minutes, that's not a hormetic stress. It's a completely different life-threatening situation. So we sort of choose these little stresses. And again, good stress, bad stress, how we handle stress. Um, great example, public speaking. Um, so for some people, the stress of public speaking is like life-threatening, right? And they'll They'll, they'll be, if they have a, a life, a, a public speaking event coming up, they'll agonize about it and fret over it and worry about it and stay up all night and not sleep thinking about it. And, and it does no good for them. On the other hand, there are people who love public speaking and I'm one. So like, oh my God, I get to public speak. This is so awesome. I get to speak in front of a crowd. Still stressful. This is still it's stressful. It's still a, a stimulatory no, event. still stressful. Right. But, but, but it's how I perceive it uh, and how I embody it that makes all the difference in how my body reacts to it uh, from a hormonal perspective. Have you made any uh, adjustments, concessions uh, as you age to alter your lifestyle in pursuit of longevity? Do you sleep more? Do you, do you sleep less? Do you work less? Uh, do you sustain periods yeah. of intense cognitive focus? No, a lot. I, I, a lot of adaptation. So I sleep more and I don't apologize for it. Um, I work less and I don't apologize for it. Um, and part of working less is a uh, it's a cognitive strategy that successful business people use, which is you just hire really good people 
to execute on your plan. Um, you know, I, I eat less. I think I told you that. Um, I don't work out nearly as much as I used to. And I'm like, I, I'm, I continue to amaze myself at how um, my body composition remains relatively the same on, on so little work. Like sometimes I go to the gym for like 10 minutes and I get a pump and I'm like, I'm done. Um, and and then you're just, just yapping in the yeah, lobby. Yeah, I'm just talking. I'm just visiting with people. So yeah, I've made, I've made major adaptations to my lifestyle, most of which is based around mitigating stress.